One night, a man named Abebe Bikila ran barefoot through the streets of Rome, lit not by street lights, but Italian soldiers holding torches. Behind him, several men followed, sprinting as hard as their legs could carry him. The marathon isn't the most popular event in the Olympics, but so much history and fun stuff takes part there. For instance, 1960s Olympics taking place in Rome, Bikila became not only the first Ethiopian to win a gold medal, but the first black African to win a gold medal that night. But his story is so much more than just that night. Born in a rural village called Jato, Kila was the son of a shepherd and not a wealth. When he was young, he moved to the capital of Ethiopia, Addis Ababa, where he would join the Imperial Guard. Oni Niskanen was a Swedish coach hired to train the guards, and he spotted Bikila and immediately began training him to run marathons. Bikila wasn't chosen for the Olympics. Instead, his teammate, Mami Biratu, was chosen to run and travel to the Olympics. However, Baratu got sick just a few days before the trip was scheduled, meaning Bikila got to run instead. Typically, to be an Olympic marathon runner, you have to have some kind of notoriety. Abibi had none of that. Nobody knew who he was beforehand. He was not projected to be a factor at all. To top it off, he chose to run barefoot because he was afraid the new sneakers he had would give him blisters, and he would have to go back to work as a soldier when the Olympics were over, and he didn't want to do that with blisters. He set a new record that night. When Bikila returned home, Emperor Haile Selassie gave him the Star of Ethiopia, one of the highest honors a person could receive. In addition, he was promoted to corporal, received a brand new Volkswagen Beetle, and a brand new home to live in. He didn't kick his feet up and relax afterwards either. In 1964, he would begin preparing for the Tokyo Olympics that year. However, he had his appendix removed just 40 days before the events would begin. Despite that, he will become the first person to win back-to-back -back marathons, setting world records in yet another marathon. In fact, he will win 12 out of 13 international marathons between 1960 and 1966. In 1969, while driving the Volkswagen Beetle, Bakila was involved in a car accident. He'd be paralyzed from the neck down, but would later learn to reuse his arms and hands again. He'd never walk again, let alone run another marathon. It's truly inspiring how some people will overcome up. Without the use of his legs, he found new pursuits. He became a master of both table tennis and archery, going on to compete in 1970's Stoke Mandeville Games in London. This event would eventually become the Paralympics we know today. In 1971, he competed in cross-country sleigh riding in Norway. Unfortunately, his life would come to an end in 1973, but not his legacy. He was given a full state funeral when he died. Stadiums, parks, and schools all carry his name. When people talk about how there are so many long distance runners from Africa, it's because people are still naming him as their inspiration for becoming runners. And that's what a champion is supposed to look like.